let's talk about the disruption of food and agriculture. Let me start with insulin. In the 1970s, insulin was extracted from the pancreas of animals. You needed 10,000 pounds of animal pancreas to make one pound of insulin. So essentially, you needed 23,000 animals to create one pound of insulin. And then, in the 1980s, a company called Genentech, working with Eli Lilly, developed insulin using a new technology that I call precision fermentation. It wasn't animal insulin, it was human insulin. Essentially, they created a technology, they modified the yeast to make insulin. Um, and at the time, of course, that technology was very expensive, uh, 40 plus years ago. But human insulin disrupted animal insulin in about 13 years, even though it's healthcare, right? So the mainstream would say healthcare is slow, it can't be disrupted. Well, here's the S curve of precision fermentation, human insulin. So what is precision fermentation? This is a concept that I coined in my report with Catherine Tubb called Rethinking Food and Agriculture, which we published in September 2019. So if you think about beer fermentation, you take a microorganism, a yeast, and you feed it sugar, you feed it wheat, you feed it nitrogen and so on, and out comes beer. The difference with precision fermentation, you genetically modify the yeast so that it can produce the ingredient that you want, in this case, a protein. So the protein itself cannot be genetically modified, right? The yeast is, um, but there's no genetic material in proteins, none. Anyone who tells you GMO protein is lying to you. Proteins have exactly no genetic material, right? So how is precision fermentation going to disrupt milk? Well, milk is essentially water. Milk is almost 90% water. 3.3% of milk is proteins. And that is the commercially valuable part of dairy. 3% of milk is valuable. Everything else is water or you, know, you can get elsewhere. So essentially, you disrupt 3% of that milk bottle and that industry is gone, right? So the precision fermentation disruption of dairy is a business to business ingredient disruption. No consumer behavior change is needed. All the industry needs to do is disrupt protein shakes, protein bars, and so on. And a third of revenues of the dairy industry go away, right? So all they need to do with this is disrupt that 3% of the bottle and the dairy industry is gone. And these technologies, these products are here now. This technology has existed for 40 years. Um, and they've gone through an incredible capability cost curve. I already eat cheese made with precision fermentation, chocolate made with precision fermentation, proteins, right? Ice cream, it's already in the market. This is not in the future. This is now, this is happening now. And this is a business to business ingredient disruption. And just to give you an idea of the cost curve of precision fermentation, from the year 2000 to about 2020, the cost per kilo, the cost per pound, went down by about 10,000 times in just 20 years, from about a um, million dollars to about a hundred dollars. That cost curve, makes Moore's law computing look like a straight line into the future, like a mainstream line. 
What this means is that essentially over the next 10 years, we're going to experience the disruption of food and agriculture. And I'm gonna focus on the cow because the cow is by far the most inefficient food production uh, technology on the planet, period. But every other animal that we use for livestock is gonna be disrupted. So if the cost curve of precision fermentation keeps improving the way it has over the last uh, few decades, essentially the cost per kilo of precision fermentation proteins will reach price parity with the cow by about 2024, 2025. That's only three years away, right? That's only three years away. And that's the rupture point. After that, it's over. And we know that in food and ingredients, disruptions happen quickly and they happen as S-curves, right? That's the way they happen. And we've seen 10 to 15 year disruptions in ingredients um, in food. In fact, think about Pepsi and Coke. In the US, Pepsi and Coke, both in the 1980s, went from all sugar, all cane as a source of sugar, to all corn as a source of uh, sugar in four years. Four years. And that was a key ingredient in Pepsi and Coke. And that disruption happened in four years. And no consumer behavior change was needed. And this is not a veggie revolution, right? This is not just about plant-based this or that, right? Um, this, what is happening today, is the second domestication of plants and animals. So we're going from domesticating uh, large organisms, the cow, the sheep, the horse, the chicken, to um, essentially microorganisms as a source of food. That's essentially what's been happening over the last 10 to 20 years. We're domesticating microorganisms as a source of food. And precision fermentation proteins are five to 100 times more resource efficient than the cow. Pre precision fermentation proteins, casein and, and whey, can be made today using 100 times less land than the cow. Think about it, 100 times less land. And what about cost? What about capability? Well, there's a, an Israeli company called Remilk that announced that they're going to open the world's largest facility to create cow-free milk. Uh, in Denmark, right? So in this one facility, they're going to make the equivalent, the dairy equivalent of 50,000 cows. Um, 50,000 cows in a 750,000 square foot facility, right? Which is a standard industrial size facility. Essentially, it's a fermentation farm. That's what it is. Um, now, what does that mean? Let me give you an example of how um, quickly how quickly it's going to disrupt industries. So Canada's dairy industry has about a million cows, one million cows for the whole country, right? Take 20 of these remilk facilities, these precision fermentation farms. Um, and numerically, they could produce the equivalent of one million cows. This would take 344 acres. That's it. And that disrupts the whole dairy industry in Canada. Gone. How quickly? Well, the CEO of Free Milk says that by 2024, they can produce dairy as cheap as animal protein. 2024 is within the cost curve that I published um, in uh, three years ago, right? So this is happening. Even if it's 2025 or six, it's only three, four years away. This is not 20 years away, or 30 or 40, as the mainstream would say. This is now. We have to prepare for that, right? These facilities, fermentation farms, 
are going to be the new food farms. In precision fermentation farms, we're going to create our proteins. Precision fermentation farms will be the new food farms. And of course, new business model innovations and possibilities um, open up. And in this case, the idea of food as software has opened up. Essentially, the idea that we can design food the way that we design an app or the way that we design graphics. And that is not possible with our existing system, right? But that is possible with food as software. Sadly, the proteins that we, the world, eat today come from just a few plants and animals that we domesticated um, thousands of years ago. 12 plants and five animals account for 75% of food. 12 plants and five animals. There are millions of plants on Earth, millions of animals on Earth, and we only use less than two dozen to eat. That is sad, if you ask me, right? There's a huge possibility space out there. Um, so with food as software and precision fermentation, we can make proteins from any animal, from any plant, right? At speed and scale. And in fact, the number of possible proteins mathematically is infinite. It is infinite. I did the numbers the number of possible proteins is larger than the number of atoms in the universe. And it's not just about the cow, and it's not even about food. Precision fermentation is disruptive across many sectors. So even today, it's being used for cosmetics. Collagen, for instance, human collagen is being made today with precision fermentation. Um, and um, materials, spider silk, health, biologics, human growth hormone, insulin, um, sweet proteins. Sweet proteins are going to be so disruptive. So one of these proteins called Brazine is about a thousand times sweeter than cane sugar. A thousand times sweeter. So one pound of um, of uh, brazine can sweeten the equivalent of a thousand pounds of sugar. Think about that without the insulin reaction. This is super disruptive. Um, it's not the same system. And meat is going to follow the same pattern as the disruption of dairy. Um, and you don't have, you don't need the high penetration, uh, even within the product, to be disruptive. Um, now, you know, Impossible Burgers, um, they only have 2%. Their, their magic ingredient, which is heme, which is the ingredient that makes um, uh, meat smell and taste like meat, uh, it's only 2% of their burgers, only 2%, right? So think about how GE got disrupted with only 2% market penetration of solar, wind, and battery. Same thing is happening with, um, with meat, right? And you think, oh my god, will this fly in X, right? Will they eat it in Texas? Will it fly in Houston? Well, yeah, right? I mean, this is a restaurant that I uh, was walking at the airport in Houston. Sure enough, they're selling impossible nachos and impossible quesadillas. And the menu doesn't say that uh, it's a veggie uh, nacho or veggie quesadilla. It just tastes as good or as bad, depending on your, um, you know, taste, as the, uh, as, as the cow thing, right? But again, this is not just the disruption of the cow. This is the disruption of all food that comes from animals. Pork, fish, eggs, all of them can be and will be disrupted by uh, precision fermentation and food as software. So I expect 
three phases in this disruption. So what we're undergoing now is the first phase, um, which is uh, ingredient, B2B, simple, right? Um, the second phase, which starts over the next few years in the 2024 to the end of uh, the 20s, is more complex proteins, more complex um, uh, meats that will be made with precision fermentation and later with cellular agriculture, um, which is going to be enabled, by the way, with precision fermentation. And I expect that by 2035, um, essentially all the animal extraction uh, industry, all the livestock as food industry will be gone, right? By 2035, it's pretty much over. I mean, I expect the dairy industry to be bankrupt by 2030. That's, you know, only less than 10 years away. But the whole livestock industry by 2035. Now, that doesn't mean that after 2035 you can't eat, you know, a cow. You can. But it's going to be a little bit like the horse and the car. You can still ride a horse, but it's not going to be a mainstream form of transportation. And it's going to be very expensive, right? Just like owning a horse is very expensive.